Wow. So I went from being 175 pounds, 12% body fat, jacked as shit. I was running five minute, I was running five kilometer runs in 20 minutes, like I was fit. Like not just like yeah, looked fit, like yeah, I was fit. Yeah, I saw. But unhealthy, because obviously yeah. there was shit going on. Well, well we're actually, we'll throw up a picture of that here too. Yeah, yeah. so show like them the before photo. You can yeah. see the before video, and then the after photos. Yeah. You know, you can see I'm basically a skeleton, and that's what I, that's what I look like in my boxers. You can see those. Oh my God. Um, yeah, and I basically went from 175 pounds to 110 pounds. If you're serious about building a brand, it's, it's a year by year. Billion dollar businesses actually have been built already on the back of just social media. So you've been doing that. This system's been working really well. You guys have been growing this company. Yeah. You've done millions in sales. Yep. And you're continuing on that path. But five, six months ago, you had a setback. Yeah. I, uh, so I hustled the first two years of the business. Um, I've always been, I've been a health and fitness guy for a while. But there's a lot about the body, and I've been a, a natural health guy, but there's a lot about the body that we don't know. And I was ignoring some, some symptoms, some symptomology that I had uh, for a while. Hmm. And uh, basically just hustling. Like I was eating clean, I was eating organic. Yeah. Um, you know, I was eating a, a lot of greens and vegetables, but I had a, a gut biome issue, like a mm. gut flora. Like you yep. basically, yep. your gut is your second brain. Yep. So your large and your small intestines, the bacteria culture in there is, you know, that's what's a key producer of your serotonin, your dopamine. Okay, a lot of your neurotransmitter production comes from the gut, right? And it's funny, because I was having focus issues, I was having mental fog, I was having, my fatigue was going up and down, I was tired a lot, and I had indigestion, man. Like, I would eat, and then I would, like, burp for, like, an hour and a half, you know? Like, I was having gas issues. You're describing me right now. Yeah. So now I'm getting worried. Yeah, yeah. So I had this gut <laughs> microbiome issue, yeah. and, you know, it's from a childhood of eating the wrong food, man, mm. you know? And not my parents' issue, but, like, I was eating sugar when I was at school, fruit roll-ups, fruit by the foot, like right. basically a ton of high fructose. Like a lot of us do. It's high fructose normal. corn syrup, a yeah. bunch of snacks, yeah. you know, eating a bunch of junk, a bunch of genetically modified crap. And, you know, and then um, I got put on this product called Accutane when I was like 19, like for the skin. Okay, it's like, yeah, it's yeah. like an, an acne medicine. Yeah, yeah. And, apparent, and they're getting sued right now in the U.S. Oh, no for way. that drug because it kills the, the gut flora. So it kills all the uh, no, bacteria. Oh, that's yeah. not good. So I end up killing off a lot of my gut flora, uh, which is the digestive bacteria in your, in your gut, mm. and had an imbalance for a long time. And then I started, you know, I started noticing that I was like feeling malnourished. And then when I was down in Florida, I got sick, and um, we thought it was E. coli, because I was basically, to not be too graphic, when I went to that the bathroom, bad. there was blood. Wow. Right? So we thought it was E. coli. So I started treating it like it was E. coli. So we started doing natural antibiotics. Well, it wasn't E. coli. It was inflammation of the large intestine. Oh. So we made it worse. With antibiotics, yeah. Well, natural, I was using natural antibiotics, like vitamin C, which is not the right thing to take if you have an inflamed colon. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, I went to another doctor, and he misdiagnosed me. He's like, oh, you've got a parasite. So I did a parasite cleanse. Now, a parasite cleanse is the worst fucking thing you can oh, do. Oh, no. So that filled my entire large intestine with ulcers. Holy so God. I had something called pan, pan ulcerative colitis, which is basically your entire colon, your entire large intestine filled with ulcers. And basically, I, I bled out for five weeks straight. Holy cow. I lost 40% of my blood. I lost 65 pounds in four weeks. Wow. So I went from being 175 pounds, 12% body fat, jacked as shit. I was running five minute, I was running five kilometer runs in 20 minutes, like I was fit. Like not just like yeah, looked fit, like yeah, I was fit. Yeah, I saw. But unhealthy, because obviously yeah. there was shit going on. Well, well, we're actually, we'll throw up a picture of that here too. Yeah, yeah. so show them like the before it. photo. You can yeah. see the before video, and then the after photos. Yeah. You know, you can see I'm basically a skeleton, and that's what I, that's what I look like in mean, my boxers. You can see those. Oh my God. Um, yeah, and I basically went from 175 pounds to 110 pounds. That's unreal. I mean, that was only three months ago. And they wanted to either put me on this low-dose chemotherapy drug called Remicade, which is basically an immune suppressing drug. Um, I checked myself out of the hospital. We should tell the story. Yeah, tell it, man. I checked myself out of the hospital. I was in the hospital. So I was in Florida. I got sick. We, we went to these different doctors, got misdiagnosed, got put on this, this regimen. The regimen messed me up even worse. I started bleeding like crazy, had to fly to Toronto, ended up in the hospital on Christmas Eve or uh, uh, Boxing Day. And then, um, you know, they did a colonoscopy, basically shove a camera up your ass. Yeah, yeah. You know, luckily I was put out for that. That actually fucks you up too. It messes yeah. up the, yeah. the inside of the, the intestines. No doubt. So I did that. And then um, you basically, if we look at your body right now, so if I were to yeah. like prick your blood yeah. and, check, and check the blood, yeah. 
there's like a inflammation markers in your blood. Right. So it's zero to four is about the healthy range. Mine was at 80. So it's called CRP, C-reactive protein. Holy cow. So my C-reactive protein was at 80 points. And the maximum healthy allowable range is four. So I was at 20x of the healthy. This is basically you're, you're, on your, you're on the road to death. So they put me on steroids at the hospital and they're like, we, you know, the steroids aren't, they're just going to stabilize you. They're not going to heal you. Right. Um, they got the CRP down to 50. So still five or 10 times the healthy dose or the healthy where my, my inflammation should be. I was bleeding every single day, 20 times going to the bathroom, That's 25 crazy. times going to the bathroom, 25 times a day and blood, just all blood. That's got to be really scary. Oh, that was fucking me up. Yeah. Holy yeah, that messed with me. cow. So. And then uh, this, my, wow. my CRP didn't improve. So 50 points, and then I checked myself out of the hospital. Because like, we want to we do this low-dose chemotherapy drug. You'll be on it for the rest of your life, Remicade. Uh, or we want to cut out a section, a huge section of your colon. Oh, man. I'm like, I'm not fucking doing that. So I found this woman, this guardian angel. Her name's Sabine. And one of my clients, it's his wife. Oh, OK. And uh, they knew I got sick because he was my client yeah, and he yeah. called the office and they're like, oh, Corey's okay. really sick, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, well, what's going on? And oh, he's like, he's basically losing a lot of weight. He's like shitting blood. He's got internal bleeding, like all this crazy shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, uh, so she called me and she's like, hey, I've had what you're dealing with. I had severe Crohn's disease and I, and they, uh, my CRP was 130 and wow. I was bleeding out and I had to get blood, blood transfusions and, and they, they told me that you were a death case, like told me to get my affairs in order. Oh my God. And I cured myself with food. So I had these doctors and I'm, you know, it comes back to who do you get your advice from? I'm listening yeah. to these doctors with these medical degrees, degrees. and diplomas <laughs> and they tell me we don't know what causes it. Yeah. They tell me food has nothing to do with it. That's what this fucking arrogant, pardon my language, can I curse a yeah. little bit? Yeah, yeah, 100%, okay. man. These arrogant assholes, with their, their, they've been educated into apathy on disease, yep. okay? Yep. It has, food has nothing to do with it. Food has nothing to do it with it. It makes no sense, yeah. You, I have a conduit, I have a tube in my body, yeah. and you tell me what I put through that tube has nothing to do with yeah. whether or not it's in good shape or not? That's everything. So, pretty simple, right? The doctor says, I don't, we don't know what causes it, you know, food has nothing to do with it. You're going to live with it for the rest of your life. I'm like, okay, so basically you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like straight up. Yeah. Like he doesn't have the results, yeah. so therefore I'm not going to listen to him. This woman's like, I cured myself. You know, I was, I was down to 80 pounds or something like this when, you know, she was sick. She's like, I was down to 80 pounds or 90 pounds. I was like a skeleton. I nourished myself back to health. You should see this woman now. She's 55. She looks like she's 39. Wow. Okay. I did it with a plant-based diet. I have a full regimen of easy to digest foods, mm. full of nutrients that we can start getting into your system now to keep your organs supported while we get the inflammation down. And uh, within four weeks on her regimen, I had my CRP down to lower than a healthy person, like zero, one. Wow. I had uh, the bleeding completely arrested and I was able to start putting on weight again. And then within eight weeks, I was back to 150 pounds and I flew to Miami Beautiful. and I met with Grant Cardone. I, I, I got myself back on my feet within about eight to 10 weeks. And, wow. Uh, no drugs. I mean, the steroids I'm, I'm still weaning off of. So right now, I have a bit of a shake. You can kind of see my hands yeah. shake a little bit because you can't just come off steroids. Yeah. So I've been weaning off those. I'll be off those by the end of the month. Yeah. But um, yeah, the last five months, man, like that's the journey, dude. And I mean, I was so bad. I was in a wheelchair. Like I had no leg. You can see from those photos. Show the photos again. Yeah. Um, I had no leg muscles. I had no glutes left. Like we had to buy padded toilet seats, like toilet seats that no had way. cushion in them. Yeah. Well, if you're on the so toilet 15, 20 times and a day no and you don't have an ass, yeah. oh you know, God. when we got in, the, uh, I was taking Epsom salt baths to yeah. get magnesium yeah. into yeah. my system. Um, we had to put a, like a little pillow at the bottom of the tub because oh. I had, it was my femur bone. It was just my bone sitting on the bottom of the tub. Unbelievable. And my girl was dressing me, dude. You know, like, I mean, I was putting on my own underwear, but she was putting on my socks. She was helping me put on my pants. Yeah, she was like, there with you the whole time. Yeah, and my brother. And my brother moved brother. into my place too and he was taking care of me. Unbelievable, yeah. man. The scary part is how, how many see how many people would have gone to the hospital with that and not come out? That's the question. Well, most Taking people that advice that sick. How severe my uh, colitis was. I mean, we could I might even be able to get you a medical picture of what the inside of my fucking oh. guts looked like because I have some photos yeah, yeah. Uh, from the hospital. Probably won't show that. Um, most people are in the hospital for a few months with that kind of flare. You know, um, the only thing that I'm rebuilding right now are my iron reserves. Like I lost so much blood, so I have to 
probably, I, I'm taking iron supplements, but yeah, probably yeah. go get an iron infusion. Um, and now I'm headed to the States. So I got, it, I got it in remission mostly. Like I still have some minor issues here and there. Yeah. Like I've, I've been traveling yeah. right now. Like I'm hustling. Yeah. Yeah. Like you saw what I did this morning. Yeah, yeah. I'm running trainings. I'm getting motivational speeches. Yeah. I ran a training with the management. I'm meeting with clients. I'm doing way too much than I should be. Like I, you know, I'm still, and I'm eating vegetable juice still. So the regimen of how we did it, we did it with cabbage juice. Mm -hmm. We did it with celery juice. We mm -hmm. did it with berries. Like I literally have a whole whole thing of blueberries here. This this okay. stuff will heal you. Yeah. You know, um, but I'm still not completely like I'm not. I got a year of healing, dude. I have to oh, rebuild the whole sure um, microbiome, the whole gut flora. Uh, but I'm going to the U.S. now for stem cell therapy. Wow. You know about stem cell I therapy? Do. So that's but next. tell me what you know about it, because everyone hears about it. I probably don't know enough about it to justify spending the kind of money that I'm about to spend yeah, on yeah. it. I heard it's expensive. But I know that I look at the wealthiest people, yeah. the wealthiest, most powerful people on the planet. I look at Tony Robbins. I look at, um, there was an interview that people should check out with Joe Rogan and Mel Gibson, where Mel Gibson took his mm. dad, who was 92, and his dad was too weak to get a hip replacement because he had a bad heart. Right. And he took him to Panama to get these mesiancal stem cells, MSCs. They were from umbilical cords, mm. right? And uh, they injected his hip uh, to fix, and yeah. it fixed his hip, and it fixed his heart. That's, oh, because wow. stem cells basically target areas of inflammation in the body. So I have inflammation right now still in my large intestines. So right. I'm going to go and right. get an IV of stem cells. It's yeah. expensive. But uh, and I'm using the guy who did Grant Cardone's stem cell therapy is the guy who's doing oh, mine. the 10X Health Systems. Um, is that that one? I don't guy. know. No, Dr. Carl. I don't know. He's in Texas. Oh, okay. so, I'm, so I'm flying to Dallas yeah. right now and I'm doing it. And the fact that the FDA tried to ban stem cell therapy, which they did in, in yeah. uh, the United States, yeah. and Texas just passed a law superseding it, tells me it's the right thing to do. Anything mm -hmm. the FDA tries to suppress, nat look, they try and suppress natural health therapies. They try and suppress natural, natural yeah, cures. Yeah. I know it's good. Yeah. So I'm going to go do that. That's crazy. I, I know there's a lot of controversy around, no doubt, yeah. but I, I see the same thing. I see people in places of power with money, they're all doing that thing. Yeah. And I, I want to explain it because there could be a lot of people watching that have no idea what it is. So I, I'll give my really dumbed down You probably know more than I, I do. Don't. I do not. I'm going to give you like a one-liner. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't know anything about this medically, a stem cell is basically, it, we know the sources it comes from, which is basically it can come from like an, like an umbilical cord or yeah. something from sort of a fetus or something. They're basically no, these so cells. No, so from a fetus is embry uh, uh, embry There we go. Em uh, what do you call those embryos? Em embryonic. Yeah, so they're not embryonic stem cells. Okay. So, yeah, so, they're stem. They're the other ones. Right. So yeah. either way, they come from. Okay, let's say they come from a umbilical cord. Yes. Yeah. The point of it is, when we're being developed and we're babies and we're growing, these are the cells that create all the parts of our body, right? Yeah. They're the cells that become everything. So what they basically are, are like think of them like blank slates. It's a cell that can really, in a way, be anything. It can be built to be anything. So when you put it into a body with damage or inflammation, you can have those stem cells go to that area and repair that specific tissue. Whereas normally, mm -hmm. if you have skin tissue, it can only be skin tissue, right? Dude, those are perfect layman's terms, man. That's right. what I was trying to do. You just made me understand it more, dude. <laughs> you just made me understand it more. But yeah, so there are there are two different types of stem okay. cells. The early ones back in the day, the controversial ones, were uh, embryon, uh, embryonic stem cells. These are umbilical uh, cord stem cells, mesiancal stem cells, and they're far more effective at healing, and they heal everything. I didn't know there was a difference. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the embryonic ones want to become babies. So those right. cells want to become a baby. Right. The ones, the mesiancal stem cells, they become, I think, anything. Anything, yeah. The other thing that stem cells do, so your cells go through like a division. There's a certain rate where your cells divide like every hour or every 24 hours, and mm. the older you get, that rate slows down. So these stem cells have a secretion, and they affect all the cells in your body and cause the, basically that, that, the rate of division to speed up. Oh, that's cool. Because like when you're okay. younger, like yeah. let's say the cells divide every 48 hours. If an expert or somebody intelligent is listening, they probably yeah, think yeah. I sound like a fucking idiot. But it, that's my understanding is basically the cells, yeah. you're going to basically speed up the division rate. Yeah. So when that you're 60, sense. they only divide every 72 hours. Right. But when you're 20, they divide every... Right. 24 hours. That's why kids heal faster. That's right. They fall, they break something, they're walking the next day. That's right. So, you know, from an umbilical cord, you can imagine how fast those cells are going to heal. I feel like our camera guy knows more than we do. He's like, I want to <laughs> say might, something. He might. I feel like he does. He I feel like he's a smart dude. <laughs> but, I already but, know he's a smart dude, I can tell. Right? But that, no, that, that's cool. So, but why yeah. can't we do that in Canada? Why do we go to the States? So, in Canada, it's only legal uh, if you're getting like a bone marrow transplant. Mm. So, right. um, it's not actually. Because man, anything, so what's controversy? So let's talk about that for a second. Yes. You said something's controversial. Yes. So what is controversy? So I think a lot of people have their own controversial beliefs. Now, yeah. I don't know if those are correct beliefs or not, but I think a lot of the fear comes from, well, hey, if 
we take these stem cells, even if they come from umbilical cords, and yeah. I'll play devil's advocate, you know, were, were, there, were there women at some point getting things like abortions or getting pregnant on purpose and then getting abortions to sell that? Oh, I think that was I don't actually part of the problem. Know. I have no yeah. idea. That was one yeah. of that was one of the initial controversies that they were having. Oh, got it. That might be yeah. the was that the embryonic stem cells? Though? I can't remember, yeah. but it's basically they knew they'd get money, so they'd get pregnant, got and it. then they would abort the baby just to get those elements. That's crazy. To sell. I hope I'm not a baby yeah. killer. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's unlikely because yeah. apparently there's a lot of like natural, like a lot of women do just it's a natural birth and that's a byproduct. Yeah. It's just that sometimes people would gain used to gain that. I think it's more yeah. control in the states. It's Mexico where it's still the wild west. Got it. Yeah. Like there's no regulation. Panama's the place to go. Right. Panama's well, actually no the place to go, dude. That's really the place yeah. to go. First, uh, but getting to uh, controversy. Mm -hmm. Controversy is the media telling you to stay away from yes. something. And anything the media tells me to stay away from, I like it. I go towards <laughs> it. Because the media yeah. tells the general population to do really dumb shit. Yeah. Go to university, go to college, get a good job, mm -hmm. pay your goddamn taxes, yeah. vote for the guy on the left or the guy on the right. Yeah. Doesn't, you know, listen to the news, yeah, right? Be afraid, pay your taxes. And what else do they tell? Well, you should pay your taxes. But, you know, they, they are basically encouraging you yeah. to conform, yep. right? That's Through what fear, they're doing. Usually. And, and same thing, go see the doctor, yeah. doctor's orders, right? Like that's what they basically tell you to do. And if you look at the top 1% of the planet, they do the opposite of what most people do. Right. So controversy is the media saying, stay away from this, it's not good. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I investigate. It's the, and I'm a big believer in that, we can talk on that because like, I think that's, that's the control piece. Like, yeah. think about it, you have billions of these little ants running around doing crazy things and you need some medium to control them. That's right. And I think the way you're gonna do that is one, through the process, so they build that thing of, you you know, you're born, right away, boom, you're in school. Yeah. And they got you for all those years. Yeah. And then as you My start to come out of My kid's not going that, to school. I, that's what I'm I I'm gonna say. start cranking out some babies yeah. soon. Yeah.